Hello everyone. So I'm Raihan, and in today's webinar, I'm going to talk about open source ops request day to life cycle management for open source cluster using TBB. So as you should already know, uh, open source is in search and analytics suite that is used for uh, lots of database functionalities. Uh, it comes with open search and open source dashboards. Uh, so typically day two operations are uh, considered to be the longest phase for any application that I was in production as enterprises have to understand how and uh, how to how to make their databases survive in the production uh, when a broader architecture adds like and the production operation stays where the developer face most struggle uh, and challenges because as the database grows the underlying the under architecture complexity also grows uh, exponentially or parallelly so uh, here comes our kipdb ops request so let's start our webinar so this is a table of contents at first we will see what is open source ops request and how does this ops request works with kipdb managed databases Later, we're going to see uh, how to scale your open source ops request horizontally and vertically. After that, we're going to see how to perform version upgrade for your open source cluster and restart your open source cluster. And finally, uh, we're going to take some questions and answer them. Okay. So let's start with how do open source um, ops request works and what are them. Uh, so open source ops request or uh, in QDB, we call them elastic source ops request. Elastic source ops request is a Kubernetes custom resource definition or CAD, CRD uh, that provides declarative configuration for the elastic search or open source administrative operations like database version upgrading, horizontal scaling, uh, volume expansion, and etc. Uh, the TLS rotation uh, for your databases. Uh, that is already provisioned with kubedb so uh, when an user creates an open search uh, instance with kubedb it is uh, watched by our provisional operator that is created by kubedb when you install kubedb into a cluster and as it watches the open source uh, uh, custom resource it uh, it creates some state sources and ports as you have configured along with some other resources like admin credentials, uh, TLS secrets, etc. Some services also. Then, now at day two, as in that you need to uh, perform some uh, administrative operations on your database, like you need to uh, uh, horizontally update your cluster. You need you may need to uh, upgrade your cluster version. You may need to ex uh, uh, just assume that the uh, volume that you have assigned initially when you have provisioned your database is not sufficient right now. So you may need to um, assign more volume to it. So you want to expand your volume for your open source nodes. So you can create an open source of request, uh, which is under elastic source of request custom resource definition in QDB. So if you uh, if you create that custom resource, uh, you're referring to the open source database, then the ops manager operator, which is also installed by QDB, will watch it continuously and it will start the uh, obstacles to operation or whatever operation that you have configured. Maybe it's uh, or maybe it's restart or, or update or horizontal scaling or vertical scaling. So at first, what it will do is it will pause our provisional operator from performing any more operations on the database so that the uh, database states are not changed until the whole uh, change is done. Then what it will going to do is it is going to create or delete some state process of ports. Uh, it can register some ports uh, as per the ops request required. And uh, if you uh, suppose that you have three nodes or three ports 
at the initial uh, deployment. Now we need to upgrade to five ports. So the upgradation will be completed. Uh, and like uh, other ops request will do the same uh, as you request it to it. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the open source database CRT that if you deployed at first and the updated open source database will be uh, in the cluster. Finally, we have based, uh, we will be resuming our open source database uh, from the host state and your database will be ready to go. So that's how open source of work, uh, works. So let me assume that you have already uh, deployed an open source database into your uh, cluster on day one. And using QDB, you can create and apply. Uh, you, can, you can provision an open source database with uh, either single node cluster or multiple node cluster. Like here you can see that this is a cluster with two master nodes, one ingest node, one data node, uh, two data nodes. So basically you can do all this stuff with QDB very easily with Elasticsearch custom resource definition. Okay. So in QDB we have Elasticsearch CRD that is used to deploy both uh, open source cluster and uh, Elasticsearch cluster. So here we are, uh, we are using it to uh, create open source cluster. So what are master nodes, what are ingest nodes and what are the data nodes? So basically the master node is uh, responsible for lightweight cluster-wide operation like creating or uh, building indexes, tracking down which nodes are uh, part of the cluster or which nodes are not, and deciding which shards to allocate to which nodes. Uh, uh, on the other hand, the data nodes are the nodes that hold the shards that contain the documents that you have indexed. Uh, and in the data nodes, they will perform other operations like pad operations, uh, air log aggregation, uh, searching, etc., and some other observability stuff. And ingest node used for pre processing the data in a pipeline. So, ingest node is basically does uh, the work of a, a lightweight log stash. People usually use log stash to perform pre processing on this data. If you have an ingest node in your cluster, you may not need to. Uh, you may not need to uh, use log search anymore. You can use this ingest node and that will do the work. And finally, uh, QDB also manages the open source dashboard, which is under Elasticsearch dashboard custom resource definition. So with Elasticsearch dashboard custom resource definition, you can uh, provision open source dashboard and Kibana, both of them. So here we are using it to create open source dashboard. So open source dashboard will be referring to the open source cluster and it will be used for visualization. Okay, so let's jump into a demo. And here you can see that we have to install KubeDB in our cluster. So you can install KubeDB using a simple Helm command. Uh, in the Helm command, you need to provide QDB provisional enabled equal to true, QDB ops manager enabled equal to true for running a provisioner and for an ops manager ports. And we are going to additionally uh, set this QDB dashboard enabled to true so that we can also provision open source dashboard as well. Okay. So, so here in our terminal, as you can see, I have already provisioned a, I have already a provision database an open source cluster, which is an OS cluster, and an open source cluster dashboard, which is an open source dashboard. The open source version is open source 1.2.2. Uh, they are already all deployed in day one. And here you can see that the KubeSQL version of the Kubernetes client, uh, server version is 1.24.6, and the client version is 1.25.1. Uh, I've already installed KubeDB. I have already provision our database and the database dashboard. And uh, I think we're ready to go to perform the open source ops requests uh, for our data lifecycle management. So let's jump to the slide. Okay, so this is the, uh, so this is basically a Elasticsearch custom resource definition 
uh, used uh, object. So here you can see the kind is elastic search. We're going to use this kind or this custom usage definition to create a open source cluster. We're going to in the metadata section name this uh, cluster to be OS cluster. The name is space where we're going to provision is demo. And the spec section, the version here, we are using in open source 1.2.0. So basically it is an open source combined cluster. Uh, uh, we are not going to use this YML here, but you can deploy this cluster if you want to. You can uh, deploy or provision your open source cluster in combined mode or in topology. So this is the YML that we have already applied to your cluster. The, in the metadata section, you can see the name is OS cluster. We're going to provision our cluster in demo namespace. As you can see, I have in the spec section, I have set in our SSL to true. This will let the, uh, this, will create, this will make your open source cluster TLS secure. And it will create some certificates uh, at your TLS layer and use them to, for internal communications. The version is open source 1.2.2. The currently supported versions are open point 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. Uh, the storage type I have said here is durable. You can also set it to ephemeral if you are using your open source cluster for testing purposes. So in the topology section, uh, currently you can provision three nodes, three types of nodes. One is master nodes, data nodes, and ingest node. Each of them will uh, create nodes with the corresponding node name roles, like master will create master node role, uh, uh, and data will create data data will create uh, topology to data section here. The specification you are going to provide, they are going to create node with data node role. The ingest section, the specification you are going to provide, our operator is going to create a node with ingest node ingest node roles. So this is already deployed as you can see i have deployed os cluster open source cluster which is with two data nodes one in this node and one master node i have also provisioned the os cluster dashboard which is a open source cluster dashboard open source dashboard uh, this is the open source port i have need to one replica to our dashboard I have port forwarded this service, which is called OS cluster dashboard. Here it is suffixed by dashboard to the database name, which is OS cluster in this case. And from our terminal, I'm going to uh, it to the uh, local host 5601, where I have port forwarded this service to do this dashboard governing service to do. And there you can, we are going to go to Dev Tools. As you can see, I can I can create any indexes, index documents here. Get them. You can delete them. So basically, you can perform all the uh, basic operations that we do from open source dashboard on our open source cluster. So here we are. So now. We're going to jump into our slide to start open source of uh, ops request or elastic source ops request. So elastic source ops request or open source ops request, however we say it, uh, we have six types of ops request. One is restart. Restart will uh, restart your open source ports. Uh, no, you will restart your whole cluster. One by one, the ports will be restarted, and finally, the uh, open source CRD will be up, uh, up, CRD will be updated. Okay. Now, if you want to upgrade your open source cluster, like for say you want to your current version is open source one point one point zero. Now you want to upgrade your cluster to be open source uh, one point two point two. So you can use this upgrade type plastic source of request to upgrade your open source. Cluster. You can perform vertical scaling. Uh, for say, you want to uh, scale up your database. You want to scale some of your data nodes up. Uh, you have currently three data nodes, but those are not sufficient enough to 
uh, uh, to come uh, to uh, to work with the uh, throughput that you are receiving at your database. Uh, so you can vertically scale up your database. Now you can perform horizontal scaling as well. Uh, let's assume that the database uh, volume that have, you have assigned at the uh, uh, while you have initialized your database with one gigs. Now you want two gigs or three gigs or ten gigs for your database. Now you can perform volume expansion. You want to suppose add, remove, or reconfigure uh, any TLS uh, or rotate TLS. You can perform it with reconfigure TLS type of request as well. So. Here, as you can see, this is a sample YML for scaling up your uh, Elasticsearch or open source uh, dashboard or open source horizontally. So this is a sample YML, as you can see, like any other Kubernetes object, it has an API version, which is ops.qdip.com slash v1 alpha one. The kind is Elasticsearch ops request. The metadata section, you need to name your ops request object, in this case, which is OS HS scale. The namespace is demo where our uh, open source cluster is already deployed in at day one or day zero. The spec section, uh, you have to mention the type of this ops request, uh, which is in this kind of horizontal scaling database reference section. You have to provide the name of your database, which will be referring to the database. Okay, so there is your open source cluster or OS cluster. The horizontal scaling section. Uh, you can uh, do it in two ways. If your open source cluster is in combined mode, you can just simply uh, put it, uh, how many replicas do you want for your uh, cluster? Uh, but if it is in topology mode, you can do it in this, this way. There will be a uh, subfield topology where you can, uh, you can mention how many master nodes do you want or how many data nodes do you, do you want. So currently we have one master nodes and two data nodes. We're going to upgrade to two data master nodes and three data nodes. Uh, we are not going to do anything with index node for now for this demo. Okay, so let's apply this YML to your cluster. Okay, so as you can see, I have applied this YML for horizontally scaling up our data nodes and our master nodes. And you can see that OS H scale object, which is a horizontally scaling type elastic search of request, is in progressing state. Here you can see all my ports. I already have three data ports. One new port have started. So let's wait for some moment. We are expecting this status to get successful.
Hello, Anto, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry for the interruption. There was some technical issue. Uh, okay, let's restart from where we are. Okay, so our horizontal upscaling uh, type elastic source ops request or open source ops request, it has been successful. Now we have two master nodes and three data nodes, as you can see, as we wanted our uh, ops request to do. Uh, now, we're going to jump into a slide once more. Okay. After horizontal scaling, now we're going to see how to perform vertical scaling on your open source cluster. Uh, so as you can see, uh, it had the almost similar uh, YML with the same API version and kind in the metadata section, we need to name our uh, vertical scaling uh, of request to be OS VS scale, VS scale or vertical scale. It will be deployed in the same namespace, which is demo namespace. In this big section, we're going to provide the type of our vertical scaling, which is vertical scaling. The type of the obstacles is vertical scaling. So in the database reference section, the database name is always cluster as well. So we are going to uh, provide a vertical scaling field here, where under there, we are going to provide a subfield uh, topology. There we are going to mention how, how much uh, CPU and memory we need for each of the nodes. Here you can see for master nodes, we're going to request one CPU. Uh, and in the memory section, we're going to request for 1.5 gigs. For data nodes, we're going to limit the memory to two gigs and request for 500 M CPU or half a CPU. And uh, in the memory section, we're going to need two gigs. And in the, for the ingest nodes, we're going to uh, limit the memory to be 1.8 gigs and request 500 M CPU. And in the memory section, we're going to need 1.8 gigs for our ingest nodes. So let's apply this YML to our cluster and start vertically scaling our open source cluster. So I have applied the YML, and now as you can see, the vertical scaling type of request is in progressing state. So like before, we're going to wait until it becomes successful and our cluster is vertically scaled up. So it's going to vertically scale up our data nodes, ingest nodes and master nodes one by one. So let's wait for some moment until it becomes successful. Okay, while our database is particularly scaling up, we can see our database. As our database is an Elasticsearch custom resource definition. So uh, it is provisioned with Elasticsearch custom resource definition. So you can type if CTL get elastic search, then the cluster name, then the name space, YML. Uh, now, open search is also provisioned with this elastic search uh, dashboard, elastic search custom resource definition. So we're going to use the short form of elastic search, if CTL get ES, uh, then the cluster name, name space, YML. So here is our cluster YML, as you can see. In the cluster YML for the ingest nodes, the resource limits are 1.5 gigs, and it, it will going to request 500 M CPU and a memory of 1.5 gigs. For the master nodes, we have 1.5 uh, uh, MI of memory and uh, the, the memory limit, and we are requesting 500 M CPU and 1.5 gigs of memory. But it's going to be scaled up. 
as you can see, the horizontal is uh, a vertical scaling vinyl. We're going to request two gigs of memory for, for data nodes and limit it to two gigs. And for the master nodes, we're going to request 1.5 gigs of memory and one CPU. So after the vertical scale, uh, vertical scaling is successful, we're going to see if it's done to our cluster or not. And in the status section of the vinyl, we must see that the status is paused now as Elastic's ops request is in process. So when any ops request will be in process, our database will be paused. Okay, as you can see, the master node is restarting now. After all the nodes are restarted with the updated configurations, the Elasticsearch CRD will be changed, or Elasticsearch CR custom resource will be changed. That is provisioned using Elasticsearch uh, CRD for our Princess cluster. So let's wait for some moment and then it's done. Okay. Okay, now our database is ready and our vertical scaling of request has been successful. So here we are. So next see our next of request, which is we're going to upgrade the version for our open source cluster, which is kindly one point. 2.2 open search version and we're going to upgrade it to open source 1.3.2 and we are going to use this YML. So here you can see uh, just the changes are we're going to change the name at the metadata section. Uh, the name is best should be must be the same. The spec section, the type for this elastic source of request uh, is upgrade the database reference section. We're going to reference the database. In the upgrade section, we are going to provide the target function to which we are uh, trying to upgrade our cluster into. In this case, which is uh, open source 1.2.2. So just go to our terminal and we're going to apply this YML. Yes, you can see the upgrade type Elasticsearch of request is progressing so that our cluster can be upgraded to open search 1.3.2. It will restart the ports with the upgraded image with the open source 1.3.2 official image one by one. So currently we have one, two, three, uh, total six ports. So all of our six nodes will be uh, restarted one by one and the whole cluster will be updated. So, Let's wait for some moment until all the nodes are restarted. Mentionable that uh, until all the ports are, have been restarted and our CRD is upgraded, uh, this status for our cluster will remain physical. It'll, it will become uh, ready when the whole cluster is upgraded. While our cluster is upgrading, 
then again see your cluster states and as you can see the cluster phase is critical it have in the status section the cluster is you can see that the cluster is paused as the Elasticsearch of Trigger's OS upgrade is in process now. So our operator is not changing anything or is not doing anything to your cluster now. It's not changing any states. And in the master topology section, you can see that the master node is now using one CPU, it's requesting one to CPU and 1.5 gigs of memory limits and 1.5 gigs of memory request. Earlier it was one gig, now one gigs, now it is requesting 1.5 gigs after the vertical scaling. Now, as you can see, our data nodes here. They are requesting two gigs of memory and it's limiting the memory to two gigs. Uh, before the vertical scaling, it was one gigs. Okay, so let's wait for our cluster to become uh, ready after the whole cluster is upgraded. I think all the ports have restarted. Okay. So now you can see our off request has been successful. The upgrade type off request and our cluster is upgraded to open source 1.3.2 and it's ready what's interesting is as you can see the dashboard port have also restarted right when the open source version is changed to 1.3.3 and that is uh, and the database becomes ready the open source dashboard port will also restart uh, automatically with the upgraded open source dashboard image as you know that uh, open source works based with uh, with its corresponding same to same version. If you were using open source one point three point two, you need to use open source one point three point two dashboard also. So you don't you don't need to configure your uh, open source cluster dashboard to upgrade separately. This off request will upgrade your open source cluster as well as the open source cluster dashboard uh, all together. So this is how the upgrade type elastic source of request works so let's jump into your slide and now we're going to see the last obstacle that we're going to show for this demo uh, which is restart type you can see that in the spec section the type is restart and you just have to mention the database reference that's it you don't need to provide any more uh, specification for database restarting so let's apply this OML. Okay, so I applied this one now. It's in progressing state. As you can see, in this node is already uh, restarting. All the ports will be restarted one by one. And this status will start in not ready. As soon as the pod restarted and it became ready, uh, our status has become ready. 
So it will fluctuate between ready, critical, and not ready until the whole cluster is restarted one by one. So let's wait until the whole cluster is restarted. And when the whole cluster will restart, you will see that this restart type of request here will become successful as well. Uh, one thing to mention here that uh, unlike this um, upgrade type of request, this cluster is not going to, this cluster dashboard is not going to be restarted. I think this one master mode has been remaining. You can see that all the other nodes have restarted. Okay. Yeah. The last master node uh, is also restarting. It's running. No, we're expecting this obstacles to become successful any moment now. Yeah. So our restart obstacles is successful as well. So the whole cluster has restarted. So now what we can do is can go to a cluster dashboard. Press this space. So we can access our cluster. It's annoying this one. So we deleted them. Okay. So I'm able to read and write from our cluster. Uh, you can perform any operation. On your open source cluster after everything we have done for uh, this day to life cycle management uh, flow as you can see so our database is okay okay so let's recap what we have done throughout this for this webinar 
So at first we have our open source cluster, which was in version 1.2.2. Uh, then we, what we have done is uh, we needed to horizontally scale our database. Like we have two data nodes, we have upgraded it to three and we have upgraded to two master nodes as well. For a healthy operations cluster, it is required to have a uh, stable master nodes. So from that concern, assume that, that you needed to upgrade your master to two nodes. So you've done that using horizontal scaling. After that, suppose that you you needed to uh, upgrade but upgrade your cluster nodes to request more memory. Uh, so we have used uh, vertical scaling uh, to request more CPU and more uh, memory for your data nodes and your ingest nodes. Uh, after that, what we have done is we needed to upgrade your cluster from 1.2.2 to 1.3.2. So we have used the upgrade type elastic source of request to upgrade our open source cluster. And finally, what we're doing is we suppose that in any scenario, you need to restart your whole cluster. So we have used the restart type elastic source of request to restart your cluster. The remaining two, like volume expansion and reconfigure TLS, you can also uh, use them. If you want, uh, as we were speaking, uh, we have performed vertical scaling, horizontal scaling, uh, upgrade and restart on your cluster. And finally, uh, we have uh, two more of requests that you can use volume expansion to expand the volume of your cluster nodes. And uh, you can reconfigure TLS, you can add TLS, you can load a TLS, you can remove TLS, or you can update the TLS and uh, uh, transport layer. So that's all from Elasticsearch of request. If you need to uh, see any detailed documentation on Elasticsearch, OpenSearch, or uh, Elasticsearch of request uh, that you can use to perform these administrative options on your cluster for your Elasticsearch and OpenSearch uh, clusters, uh, databases, or databases, you can uh, visit qdb.com. And from there, you can go to uh, Elastic search, then you have in detailed documentation format. So that's all. That's all for our total uh, demo. And first, for the upcoming features of Open Search, we are going to add the latest versions for Open Search. The currently uh, supported versions, as we have already told, uh, 1.0, 1.2.2, and 1.3.3. Uh, we are going to upgrade. Uh, our open uh, we're going to add support for open source 2.0 uh, very soon in our upcoming releases and as you know that open search have added a dynamic node role that you can use to uh use to add uh, use to provision dedicated uh, machine learning nodes and some other dynamic nodes uh to your open source cluster uh so we are going to add support for them uh when we add support from uh, open source 2.2 and we are going to also uh, improve you also working uh, to improve our user experiences and i hope uh, you will see them in our upcoming releases so thank you thank you for uh, being with the whole webinar on you can take over from here so with this we are concluding the webinar Thank you all for your lively participation. We hope to see you again for next time. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.